Hello, and in this video, I am going to be talking about the Mayan calendar, some mathematics, and lately, I have been obsessed, to no other, obsessed as far as the mathematical terms of the Mayan calendar, for the Mayan calendar is the only thing that coincides with how the universe moves, the speed in which it moves, and a lot of the stuff in which Stephen Hawking has talked about, Albert Einstein, of course, physics. And I'm not that big into physics and stuff like that, but this has really been giving me a lot of interest lately, and I've been doing a lot of number crunching. I mean, a lot of number crunching. I'm gonna show you a little bit of what I have done over this video. And the first thing that I wanted to do was I looked, I, I browsed into this book here, which is the Mayan calendar and the transformation of consciousness. And inside this book, I have all of the cycles here. You see this cycle here shows 16.4 billion years, moving all the way up to 2011. And on the page beside it, it shows you now I got that little red writing on there, I don't know why he did that, but that just shows you where it ended her story. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a mathematical formula. And the formula is right there. That is for the first cycle, 13 times 20 to the power of 7. Then the next one's the power of 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 13 times 20 period. And too much the uh, figuring out that last one is actually 13 to the 20 times the power of negative 1. And if you use the power of infinity, that number will keep going on forever, minus infinity. I'm going to talk about infinity later on in this. Now, I'm trying to determine whether this number 20 happens to actually be a real number. And same with the number 13. I mean, do they happen to be an even number or is there a lot of decimals? And when I look at the planetary cycle, which is right there, the planetary cycle, 13 times 20. Now, what's 13 times 20? 260. Yet they have 256. So that got me thinking some more. 256. What's so big about that number? And the thing about the number 256 is that it is an binary, it's a binary number. So... 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, boom. So it really is 2 to the power of 8, or 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. So it's a very binary number. So that's making me think that that number is in fact 256 divided by 13. So that made me to believe that this is the formula for which the final cycle would be. 2 to the power of 8 divided by 13 to the power of 7. So that would get us about 15 billion years. And ironically enough, that is exactly how much that Stephen Hawking says the universe is as far as how old it is. So, after figuring out that number, I came across a formula. And I think this is a very relevant, very big formula, which would in fact explain, at least a lot more clear, how the speed of time... And this is the formula. 2 to the power of 8, like we were just talking about over 13, to the power over 1 of infinity. This would be the rate of time in which how fast it moves. Okay, so now when I look at this formula that I created here on my spreadsheet, it says here that the universe is 14,928,619,309 years old. And the cycle here would be 3 billion years long. Each one of these getting quicker. I use the formulas in which I have explained to get these numbers. So this is the first cycle. The second cycle, which is the mammalian cycle, started off 155 
million year cycles. The familial cycle was next. It started off at a little over under 8,000. The next cycle, which is the tribal cycle, the first cycle was 400,000 years long. Then we have the regional cycle, which was 20,000 years long for the first cycle. And the number on the left is how many years are left until that date of 2012. So when the regional cycle left started, that was a little under 99,270 years ago, according to this math. And this was the start of his story here, or this was the start of his story. And we move on to the national cycle. So these numbers are getting smaller and smaller. This, of course, is set by years. Uh, the planetary cycle, which was a cycle of power. As you can see, the first cycle was 52.4. The next one was 3.3. Then the galactic cycle, which is the one that we're in now. You can see how these numbers get smaller and smaller. And I, I did these formulas for a while. I mean, I was on cell 1300 when I went up there because the, the formula that I used was this. I'll show it to you. 19.692307692377. That is, of course, 256 divided by 13. I just decided to write it in instead of putting the formula in. I should have put the formula in, and I'd actually be a few a uh, little bit more accurate if I did. So I probably will do that. To the power of negative 99 times 13, because we're doing 13 cycles here. So that is the formula that I used on this one here. And what I did with this formula was I moved it all the way down so this section here is minus 99 to the this is power of minus 98 97 96 95 94 power of minus 93 and so on and as we move down to uh, the ones that I just showed you this of course is to the power of 7 so this is to the power of 7 and this is where it all started Okay, so now continuing on, I got this little picture here, and this is a theory of mine as far as how creation works as far as cycles. So this, we'll just say this point here, this point here was the start. That was 15 billion years ago, and things are moving quicker and quicker, and this middle line here, this to me is the 2012 stage, the December 21st, 2012. This moment here is the beginning, and the beginning was an infinite moment, and that means there was not a start. And it's a very powerful thing to try to understand. All I can know is the theory of infinite numbers, but at this point here, would be another infinite moment here. When we get to this part way through here, this would be infinity. So we are gonna live December the 21st in an infinite moment. I mean, we, may, we live every second in an infinite moment because if you think about it, what would be a little bit greater as far as say, say you're talking exactly midnight. So now, what we could do is you could take, for example, seconds. You have 0.9 seconds. What's the next one after that? This, 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 this. You could keep putting nines in forever. And infinity would have that. So it's an infinite moment every second. But this is a major infinite moment right here on December the 21st, 2012. Which means that when this infinite moment is over, as hard as that is to understand, that means we would have an infinite beginning because at the end of an infinite end comes an infinite beginning. So this would be the infinite beginning here. 